Honorable Moses Kurian. Good afternoon, Your Chair. Good evening, Thank you very much. and Karibu Sana. Welcome to the committee. Honorable Thank members. You. Honorable Kosin, please take your seat. Honorable Moses Kuria, welcome to the committee. This is a committee where you are appearing before most of members or your former colleagues. Yes, This is a committee set up under the standing orders, the law and the constitution to vet uh, persons like uh, yourself who have been nominated by His Excellency the President to serve in cabinet as uh, cabinet uh, secretaries. And uh, we have uh, been sitting here since yesterday listening to your colleagues, exchanging views, members in asking interrogative questions, and so far, so good. So it's now your turn, you are welcome to the committee. And uh, I will now ask the clerk to administer the oath. You may choose, depending on your faith, to have the Quran, the Bible, or affirmation. I, Moses Kiari Kuria, do have a soya to testify on all matters in question and tell this committee the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help me God. Thank you. This committee is chaired by yours truly, the speaker. Thank you, Chair. And we have members who I will invite to introduce themselves, starting with the Honorable Wandai. Yes, uh, Mr. Speaker, uh, my name is Opio Wandai, uh, the MP for Ugunya. My name is Junette Mohammed, MP Suna East. My name is Owen Baya, MP Kilipi North. Uh, Robert Bui, MP Kadiani. They have Mokang County Pinyeri. Very nice to Kevin. When you're a member of Parliament, Kwanza, Donzoya County. George Gitonga Murugara, Baraka. Kosing David, MP for Kosao. Abdul Rahim Daud, MP North Menti Meru County. Honorable Mishim Boko, MP Likoni. Nelson Koech, MP Belgut. Good evening, Kale Bamis, MP Sabut. Dido Raso, MP Saku. Abdishurie, Balabala. Emma Semeri, Teso South. Steven Mule, Matungulu. David Gikari, your friend. Good time, this. Naisula Lesuda, MP Saburu West. I feel should come from Jeanette, from the Pangan experience. Honorable <laughs> <laughs> uh, Kuria. Uh, yes, sir. This meeting is not adversarial. Like we have told all members, we want to have a, a candid, open exchange of ideas. Members are interested in establishing your suitability. Uh, for the nomination you have uh, gotten as our Minister for Trade, Investment and Industry. Uh, we want to have a cordial exchange, uh, observe basic uh, rules of the committee, address the committee through the chair. Members will also ask you questions through the chair. We limit any direct exchange between yourself and the committee members, and we will encourage you to answer questions as precisely and as concisely as uh, they are asked. 
and members asking also we expect you to be concise and precise and in the interest of time when you ask a question give time to the nominee to answer uh, let's not uh, veer off the line too much I uh, will now ask you to present uh, certain documents uh, which if you have sent to us and you have the originals, they will be compared by the clerks and the originals will be given back to you. Uh, do you have uh, the compliance with tax obligations? That's the KRA tax compliance? Yes, I do, Mr. Chair. Clearance with the Higher Education Loans Board? Yes, I do. A clearance with Ethics and the Corruption Commission? Yes, I do. Certificate of Good Conduct from the DCI? Yes, I do. Have you ever been charged in a court of law and convicted of an offence? I've been charged but never convicted. Are you a dual citizen of Kenya and any other uh, jurisdiction? No, no such thing. Excellent. So we go to... What is your value? What is your financial net worth? My financial net worth, Mr. Chair, is 750 million shillings. Uh, you have a segregated breakdown? I do not, but uh, I can proceed to tell you the distribution. You can uh, tell the committee on how Thank, Thank you, Mr. Chair. My net worth is comprising of real estate development and shares held in unlisted companies in, in my business concerns, in manufacturing, in fintech, and in energy sector. Excellent. And... Uh, yes? I wanted him to not to interrupt you, Chair. He's the chairman of independent petroleum dealers. So where the, where the shares are there. I said as much, but uh, on opportunity being one of my members, I welcome that. Thank you. <laughs> so we may require both of you to disclose uh, <laughs> further and better particulars. Uh, honorable members, I'll open uh, uh, the floor by asking the Honorable Moses Korea that we'll give you 10 minutes. If you spend less, the better. That clock will start ticking. We should be done with you in 90 minutes. Tell us the story of your life to you. till the arrival of where you are sitting. Thank you, Chair. I was born 51 years ago in Gatolu South in Kiambu County. I attended a primary school in a school by the name of Gidoya Primary in Gatolu South. That is between the year 1977 and the year 1983. I attended another school called Itulo High School in Natolu South for my O levels between the year 1984 and 1987. And I passed with flying colors. I proceeded to, for my A levels, Pika High School between the year 1988 and the year 1989. Again, I passed well, and I was admitted to the University of Nairobi, the University of Nairobi, between in the year 1990 for a Bachelor of Commerce degree, specializing, specializing in accounting and finance. I graduated in the year 1993, and between 1994 and 1995, I worked for various organizations, including Total, and uh, Diane Blair Investment Bank. In the year 1995, I joined Standard Chartered Bank all the way to 1999. And in the year 1999, I was poached by uh, a bank in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia by the name of Alaji Bank, which happens to be the largest Islamic bank in the world. I worked there for four years, and in the year 2003, I teamed up with my colleagues uh, in the Gulf region and we set up a banking and financial sector consultancy by the name of Walmart International. 
a little consultant for banks and other organizations in the area of technology, Islamic finance, and business processes across the entire Middle East. Represented some leading companies in technology from Europe and India uh, in Middle East and North Africa and later on the entire Africa. I came back to Kenya in the year 2007 at the invitation of the late Mwai Kibaki, who was my friend, and he asked me to assist as a consultant in his government, and I worked in that role until the year uh, 2008. And the Honorable Uru Kenyatta is his technical advisor on trade matters. Uh, later on, the Honorable Uru Kenyatta was transferred to the National Treasury as a Minister for Finance. And I moved there as also a technical advisor in the Treasury until um, his election as president in the year 2013. In the year 2014, there lost a by election in Gatundu South constituency following the sad demise of the then member of parliament, Honorable Joseph Ngugi. I offered myself for election in that by election and I won. I was the first person uh, in the new constitution to be elected and opposed. Let alone some members who are sitting here would copy from me, including Honorable Kimani Shoma. <laughs> and uh, later on, uh, to the year 2017, I was again elected, re-elected, we got all the south, until the year 2022. And I held that job. I offered myself to be the governor of Kiambu County. I did not succeed. And uh, I was then nominated by President William Samuel Ruto to be the cabinet secretary in the docket of in, in the Ministry of Investment, Trade and Industry. And that's how I am here, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Moses Korea. And now open the floor to members. Uh, honorable members, uh, I'll restrict on uh, direct one question each for the member, the nominee to answer in the same manner. Majority Leader. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. And maybe I should also begin by declaring interest in standing on number 90. Because the Honorable Moses Kuria, besides being my colleague, has been a member of parliament in my county and my very close friend since uh, we joined parliament together. But Honorable Speaker, that uh, being so, uh, here is also copied. Uh, he said he's, he attended the University of Nairobi having missed attending the Alliance High School to Ituru Boys, so Ituru Secondary School. <laughs> but that being so, Honorable Speaker, the Honorable Moses Kuria, you are taking over a docket that is very important. And uh, trade between our country and Uganda, you know, Uganda is our top most uh, bilateral trade partner in the region. But there exists a huge potential between our country and Ethiopia. I would want to hear what your thoughts are in relation to cross-border trade uh, between our country and our neighboring countries, Ethiopia, and access to the African free trade area uh, in the larger region. Uh, also on uh, matters to do with trade, uh, you are aware that our traders here in Nairobi and in many other urban centers suffered immensely under the previous regime, especially our traders in downtown Nyamakema, Kamukunji, in Isli. And since these are uh, trade docket issues, uh, right from the question of standards and camps to the smooth uh, uh, clearance of goods at the port of Mombasa, I would also want to hear thoughts on that. Honorable Speaker, if you indulge me, the Honorable Moses Kuria has also indicated that he has been charged severally. I think he forgot the word severally. <laughs> but he has uh, indicated he has not never been uh, convicted. Uh, however, Honorable Moses Kuria, there is an affidavit that has been filed by a petitioner who alleges that you 
once confessed to having received some bribe somewhere. Uh, I don't know the authenticity of these allegations, whether it is indeed true, as the petitioner says, that you have confessed uh, to having taken a bribe. With that, Honorable Speaker, so, good. Moses, you will take four. Uh, one day. Uh, thank you, uh, Honorable Chair. Uh, Honorable Kuria, you know, unlike uh, some of us in this room, who know you, okay? A number of Kenyans out there tend to misunderstand you. Sometimes they perceive you as someone who is divisive, who can cause to, uh, animosity. By the way, you, 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 you carry uh, yourself and the manner you communicate. Uh, what assurance can you give Kenyans in light, live TV, television uh, that uh, you mean well for the cohesion of the country, the unity of Kenya, being a multi-ethnic, uh, uh, multiracial uh, society uh, that Kenyans should not feel afraid uh, when they hear your name or when they see you? Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ch Ch Speaker, Chairman. Chairman, I want to state that uh, Moses Korea is my friend. We spent uh, four to five days together in Pangani in the cell. You should also disclose that I came there to see you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Speaker, it's true. I was coming to that. So you also visited us there and you gave us some legal advice. Mm -hmm. And uh, he did a lot of things there, but that's a subject for discussion another day. But now I wanted, but that, now that will not stop me from uh, vetting him now, Mr. Chairman. Yes. So the question I wanted to put to him is, uh, if you are approved and made the Minister for Transport for Trade, how will you deal with this question of counterfeit, counterfeit goods? Because it is becoming a delicate issue in this country on how to protect the local manufacturing industry and the counterfeit goods that are coming from outside. So how will you strike a balance between the two so that you save the people who are manufacturing locally and you also don't stop people who are coming from importing goods are being told that you are bringing counterfeit goods? What is, what, what are, what is your vision on that? And lastly, uh, you, the issue of trade in balance. Like if you see, this, there's a question here that it's now 120 billion shillings, the trade in balance. Uh, how do you intend to address that? What are, what is your, what are your thoughts on that? Thank you very much. Yes, Robert. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Chair. Uh, Chair, I still want to deal with uh, Chapter 6, uh, which is very important for uh, nomination and election or appointment of public uh, or state officers. And we must look at that uh, article in terms of deed and word. Now, uh, the nominee is publicly known, he's a very highly publicly known individual, his comments is uh, on Twitter, on Facebook. His temperament has actually been uh, highly publicized. Um, he himself uh, did say that he was bribed by the Honorable Amos Kimunya. Uh, and Peter Mungai's affidavit, which is in our files, states that in, in uh, 2013, he threatened to hand down those that had voted for Raila Molo Odinga. Um, again, I understand this year, early this year from this affidavit, he threatened to remove one of uh, Uhuru's, uh, I cannot say the word, maybe he can mail engine parts. Um, and he's been noted on national TV using four letter words. And not to forget that he once walked out of a TV live interview. So I'd, I'd like to ask the nominee, do you honestly feel that you sufficiently qualify to pass the integrity test? Moses, you can answer those four. Thank you very much. Chair, I will... Speaker, not to interrupt, Honorable Speaker, but with the indulgence. I don't know whether Honorable Mbui said in some of the things they're saying are in the affidavit. They are in the file, uh, Speaker. 
I, I picked from the pack. Go on and answer Moses. I don't think those are insurmountable questions. Chair, yeah. uh, if I may seek guidance, yeah. can I choose the, any order to answer? Yes, yes. So I can. Thank you very much. In as precise a manner as yeah. you precisely asked. Thank you. Chair, I ask that because I would want to dispense on the whole issue surrounding uh, Chapter 6 that have been raised by Honorable Robert Boy and uh, my good friend Honorable Ichungo uh, and uh, Honorable Opio and I. We've come from a very divisive phase in the politics of our country. Most of us were players in that contest for a long time. And for myself, this contest was, or this participation was, way even before I became a member of parliament, since I came back to this country in 2007. So I've been around for around 15 years. I was also around before even I, I went into professional practice. I, I should have mentioned that I was, I was a treasurer of uh, the student organization of Nairobi University. So I, I was politically exposed from that point. And uh, I grew up under the wings and tutelage of Kenneth Matiba and Jalamogi Ogega Odinga. So from the onset, I was, I was weaned and grew up at the time that you were agitating for multipartism and democracy in this country. That kind of uh, a background at a very early age was I started working with the, with the, with the team of uh, Matiba and Jaramogi. I was part of the Saba Saba movement. I was there at Kamukunji when we were fighting for removal of Section 2A when I was only 21 years old. And as a participant, we've been involved in, uh, yes, very divisive moments. And the division that characterized this country also shaped many people. So that's a reality. It can only be my hope and desire that all of us collectively will be able to see a Kenya that now, because that is now we're talking about 30 years, that you can be able to graduate into better political culture that is more issue-based, that is not personality-based. Within those 30 years of divisive politics, we've all collectively said things and done things which to each other we need to have a moment of repentance and forgiveness against each other. And that is not just to me, that is to many political players in this country. So let me say that uh, any perceived extremism or divisiveness on my side has been shaped by the kind of political culture I've had. And going forward, as we progress, I am going to play my role in ensuring that we have a culture where political competition is not an enmity, but it's just that, competition. And, 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 and I do not think that personally, as a person, I have got anything within my DNA that is synonymous with, with hate or extremism or separation. I, 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 I have been in this parliament, I enjoy very good relations with most of these members, good, good moments and bad moments, and with most political players. And so, I, 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 to answer the question of the Honorable Robert Boy, I, I, I think I, I passed that master of chapter six that would enable me to play my role in taking this country forward. I am cognizant and aware of the accusation uh, uh, by one of the uh, affidavits that was received about having accepted to receiving a bribe. And I think that matter was taken out of context. I was called upon to uh, explain uh, my comment by the speaker, and the speaker did point out to anything within my comments that was deemed to be ex external, and the speaker ruled on that matter. Whatever I said that was outside, including some comment that was not very good to my friend Junet, whereby I actually said that comment, confusing our social life outside with life inside parliament. But I would say that I was called upon by the speaker to explain, I explained, and in my honest and humble opinion, that matter is spent and is less judicata. And that's what I can say about it. 
to answer to Honorable Opio and Dice. Again, as he say correctly, misunderstood. I am misunderstood in some quotas, but those quotas are mostly within social media and, and elite circles. If you go to most corners of this country, they know me as a peace loving Kenyan who is committed to cohesion and who has worked a lot to bring people together. As I can say uh, from some of the region where someone like Kopio and I come from, a place like Kondere, I am the second most popular person after I love Dinka, and that's on record. So uh, I am committed to cohesion and Kenyans can look upon me as somebody who is going to work to bring Kenyans together. Thank you, Mr. Chair, on that issue of Chapter 6. I, I wanted to dispense on it so that we can, in my opinion or my request, Chair. spend time to... Chair, again, uh, on a point of order. Yes. Chair, I think why I raised the issue of the issue the Honorable Mbui was raising, because I have actually traced the particular issues he was pointing to. And one of them, Honorable Chair, is an email from a Peter Mungai, not on an affidavit, and therefore, Honorable Speaker, in writing that is not, it has, it's not admissible, and the Honorable Boy should not be allowed to even quote it, refer to it in. Uh, uh, that, that, uh, there should be a mistake from the clerk's office because anything on email that is not an affidavit, Honorable Speaker, I think you should guide us on whether we should be referring to emails because nothing stops any member of the public from making whatever manner of allegation. And those are the things that uh, the Honorable Pui was referring to. Uh, yeah, uh, Chair, Chair I, I wanted to just respond to the majority leader and say that that is not made up. I have found it in the file and I have meticulously read through the file. So yes, it is not an affidavit, but it is part of the contents of the file that has been placed in front of us on, for us to be able to use to vet the nominee. And also, I believe the nominee is able and capable of answering even allegations because that's basically why we are here. Thank you, Chair. Uh, you know, the standing orders is very clear that uh, any member of the public who wishes to bring to the attention of the committee anything adverse against a nominee must bring it by way of affidavit. The clerk tells me that uh, out of exuberance, they decided to pass on to the nominees even materials that were not admissible under the standing orders. So to the extent that that is an email, uh, Robert, uh, we rule that it's inadmissible. Uh, let's deal with the affidavits uh, that are on record, and we have furnished them to the nominee. I believe you got them, Moses? Yes, I did. Yes. 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 Did you or did you not waive money that you had received a bribe from... Uh, from Kimunya. I think that is what Ichungo was asking. Chair, uh, I think uh, when I waived the money, I did not say it was from Kimunya. I was only pointing out that there, is, there has been efforts to in, control Parliament from outside. And I believe Parliament is a very important institution. And if, I'm, if I am approved by this House Chair, I will do everything possible to ensure that uh, for those of us in executive leave Parliament to do its own work. Are you waving your own money? Yes, I was waving my own money. <laughs> Back to four? Ch Ch I think uh, yes. I have some questions I did answer. Oh, okay. I wanted to dispense on yeah, the, okay. Five, uh, chapter six the, issues. So that, uh, the remaining questions? Yes. So on the uh, question by Honorable Shomwa about Ethiopia, indeed, as a very pertinent issue. Uh, Ethiopia is a huge market. 120 million in population. It represents a very big opportunity for Kenya in terms of matters trade. And not just uh, Ethiopia, uh, the whole of Africa is a very huge opportunity. Uh, Kenya has deposited all the instruments uh, under the Africa continental free trade area. And uh, if I'm approved by this house, one of my priority areas is to ensure that Kenya uh, exploits the huge potential of intra Africa trade. Currently, intra-Africa trade is only 19%, and this is a conversation we're having with uh, my colleagues across Africa to be able to raise this percentage uh, to somewhere even in the region of our uh, East African community, intra-regional trade, which is now standing at uh, 45%. Uh, only uh, two weeks ago, uh, I was in Ethiopia, 
uh, as part of uh, President William Ruto's delegation uh, when we launched uh, Safaricom Ethiopia. Again, uh, a very important uh, milestone there. Uh, we did even push uh, for uh, uh, Safaricom Ethiopia to get its mobile money business there. And uh, the issue of Safaricom and MPESA enabling uh, trade and enabling us to trade within each other is very important. I, I look forward to uh, working with, uh, with uh, our side and Ethiopian side to be able to uh, even uh, work to ensure that we can use our local currencies for trade. Mm -hmm. Both countries, Kenya and Ethiopia, are having some challenges on the forex market. Uh, and so there exists opportunity for us to use our local currencies for, 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 for trade. Um, we have now uh, around 35 countries have uh, deposited instruments within the ACFTA and indeed uh, opportunities really do abound. Again, uh, uh, two and a half weeks ago, Kenya did flag off, President Ruto did flag off the first consignment of tea to Ghana under the Africa Continental Free Trade Area Guided Trade Mechanism. Um, President Ramaphosa is expected here uh, in the next few weeks. Uh, in this endeavor of ensuring that Africa, before we look for markets beyond our borders, we, we explain to what, what exists here. Um, I've been a question about uh, our traders in the informal sector, uh, in Yamakema and all other areas. And it's true that uh, our, our, our business community and our traders have gone through very difficult times having their goods auctioned. Uh, we've had before presidential events for burning of goods. Not before we used to have burning of ivory and such kind of things. Now we've had presidential events for burning of goods and not. I would want to ensure, assure our business community that if I'm approved for this position, I will ensure that our people are free to do business and to, you know, to, to have an environment where they are not. We have to stop the culture of criminalizing enterprise. And that's why we say as Kenya Kwanza that every hassle matters. The question by Honorable Junit Mohammed about counterfeit is very important. But let me say this about counterfeit. If I, I have had this discussion with our anti-counterfeit agency, uh, I, I would wish that the efforts we, ex we extend to uh, fight counterfeit is for protecting local manufacturers. And if I'm approved for this position, I'll do everything possible to, pro to protect local manufacturers. We have to grow our manufacturing. Our current uh, GDP contribution from manufacturing is 7.5%. This is not acceptable. And it is my endeavor to see this grow to 20%. So in doing this, we have to protect our local manufacturers. Now, does uh, our current effort of fighting counterfeit uh, protect local manufacturers? Yes and no. In most cases, you will find that the, our fight against counterfeit is for protecting holders of IP for imported goods, not for local manufacturing. I have one example where uh, some two weeks ago, I got a call from a certain member of parliament about to, to asking for some opinion or some help because some people, uh, some of uh, youth from his constituency had been arrested for selling uh, some shoes which go by the name of Timbaland, uh, uh, which was said to be counterfeited. And I was wondering, and I had to ask my, my son, because I'm not very conversant with this brand, how would I know, as a cabinet secretary nominee even, genuine Timbaland, which is not manufactured here in Kenya, and imported Timbaland? And I would wish that that effort, or those boys who were arrested for counterfeiting butter shoes, so that we know we are protecting our butter shoe factory and the jobs which are there. So th we need to look at this issue of counterfeit and ask ourselves, are we just protecting holders of IP, foreign, uh, foreign IP, or are we just are we protecting local industry? If it is about protecting local industry, we will do everything possible. If it is just about protecting foreign IP, this is a conversation we are going to open with holders of foreign IPs. And I'm glad that uh, uh, that member, uh, without trying to influence this committee, who asked me for this help, the Honorable Member for Nakuru East is, is in this committee. So, because we need to have this conversation and be able to separate. Is it counterfeit or substandard? For substandard, we are going to use all efforts possible 
to stop substandard goods and believe in ourselves as a country. I, 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 I have expressed my intention, Mr. Chair. Uh, we now have pre-shipment inspection that happens in other countries. And by the way, we do spend a lot of our money, dollars, foreign countries that we don't have, uh, to some very young companies in China and other countries. Uh, it is my assumption that before these goods come to this country, because our pre-shipment inspection is done there, shouldn't we have inspected for counterfeit there, much as we inspect for, for standards here? Why do we let a container come all the way from Guangzhou in China? Come and come here, and then when it comes here, we talk about counterfeit. I, I, I have expressed intention to open a window of shipment inspection and, uh, and post shipment inspection. If you choose to have your goods inspected in China, you will have them inspected in China. Also, we have, I'm going to open a window to have these goods inspected here so that we can take responsibility for our own. And maybe if it's inspection is happening in Mombasa, that is more business for, for the people of Mombasa, more jobs for the people of Mombasa. Most importantly, to stop the hemorrhage of foreign currency when we send this for inspection. So we are going to look at all this, and look at counterfeit within the context of doing the most important thing, protecting our local manufacturers so they can protect their jobs and growing manufacturing to 20% of GDP by the year 2030. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Uh, Owen. Wow. Everybody. Your name is everybody. <laughs> Mukami Ferdinand Morugara after all. I'll just, since everybody wants, I'll just give everybody. Um, thank you very much, uh, Speaker and Chair, on uh, uh, Moses Korea. Uh, as you take the, as uh, you wait for confirmation to take office. I would like to know your thoughts on uh, the African Growth and Opportunities Act um, and uh, the expansion of EPZ. The Kenya Kwanzaa Manifesto talks about job creation and EPZ has been one of those uh, instruments that we have used through the AGOA Treaty to actually expand and increase uh, jobs within the country. But again, there are challenges. A lot of uh, Investors who want to come here and actually invest within EPZ and Agoa have issues of land. Where do they get land? The cost of land in this country to set up factories and uh, manufacturing is exorbitant. It's prohibitive. It makes investors not want to go into this. How will you restructure EPZ such that there is availability of land that will take um, uh, advantage of the opportunities offered, bringing more manufacturing, save the foreign currency, like you're saying, and also take care of the welfare of the people who work within EPZ so that they feel that they're properly employed. Uh, thank you. Mukami. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, congratulations, the nominee, Moses Kuria. I know you have what it takes considering you're in this industry. I, uh, I served in trade co committee uh, last term. And trade and industry, there were so many challenges. Uh, Moses, I want to ask you, what are some of the policies you put in place to promote agro-processing, value addition, and diversification of products by Kenyans, farmers? You remember when we are going down to this country, we were telling our farmers that we are going to make sure that they will have guaranteed minimum return for their tea, for their coffee, for their milk. Another question, what measures will you take to ensure that all the stored projects, because there are so many projects which are stored, because trade and industry, we were not getting money, there was no budget for that. Uh, what are you going to do to make sure that you give them priority uh, to finish those projects? Thank you. Ndugu Moses Gurian, you are up with the test. Um, I'm just asking, we have a lot of unemployment uh, in this country, particularly the youths. We've had uh, even uh, university graduates uh, roaming around the streets, and uh, some of them are doing informal businesses. How are you going to help us? in your ministry, if you are taking, to be able to have these uh, youths 
some of them are still in Baghdad, you go in my area, you find there some of them. But I, uh, I saw one guy who was that master's in the physical sciences and uh, it was on the TV all the way from um, Siaya actually making clothes, sewing clothes. So what will you have as a ministry? Do you want to enable these youths actually get employment? Thank you, Chairman. <coughs> Nominee, first and foremost, I think you've told us that maybe last week, His Excellency the President flagged off some crop produce to Ghana. Um, my question is on trade. How do we brand our produce which we are exporting such that we do not have other people branding our produce as their own and selling it at better prices than we are doing because that may be one contributor of the imbalance in uh, trade. Number two... You are to one question. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, let me... <laughs> the, the real one now is here. I represent a rural constituency. The real question. That was for Kenya now. Let me ask you something for the Raka. Um, I represent a rural constituency. We've talked of unemployment, we've talked of uh, everything that is negative about rural constituencies, and I would like to hear from you, what plans do you have in terms of investment and industry in the rural areas and rural towns and markets, including Marimanti, which you know very well in Daraka, so that those who live down there do not feel that it's only a rural urban migration that can assist them procure jobs, but we would, as a government, be taking jobs to those people in those rural areas. Moses, those are four. Let me add the would make five. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, to my friend Moses, uh, one of the key pledges of Kenya Kwanzaa Manifesto is the decriminalization of small enterprises and small traders who have suffered the harassment by county government officials. What steps would your ministry take to create viable markets within various towns and promote small-scale traders, including the youths who would want to establish businesses, but uh, innovation is lacking. Innovation is there, but funds for innovation uh, expansion is lacking. So how would you create those policies so that they can make factories. Uh, we can do the factories what are they in China or wherever, in Kenya and in the rural areas, together with Mukami's question of agro-processing, what would you do regarding uh, value addition to Mira uh, in locally and in the diaspora? Thank you. You can answer those five, Moses. Thank you, thank you, Chair. Uh, the Honorable Owen Bayer, has asked a very important question about uh, AGOA, the Africa Growth and Opportunity Act. Uh, this, this act is coming to a close uh, in 2025. Uh, I'm, 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 as of in my submission to Parliament, you've seen that I'm a prayer within AGOA, within EPZ. We now have 138 uh, enterprises uh, within that, so that's a space I know very well because I'm one of them. We have concern about uh, AGOA extension. Uh, we are watching closely what is happening within the United States. Uh, we are supposed to be uh, replacing AGOA with a, a bilateral uh, agreement which has been in negotiation. Uh, it is not clear as we speak uh, about uh, the direction that the Biden administration is taking on AGOA. Uh, because there has been mixed signals whether AGOA is going to be extended, whether the, whether the Biden administration is still committed to the Trump administration's initiated uh, bilateral agreement with Kenya. And this is a conversation which uh, uh, informally I've, I've, I've been having with the, with the, with the United States. Um, um, it is pointing to two, uh, two things. One. Uh, there's a likelihood uh, that we are going to have uh, a stopgap 
uh, sort of agreement, uh, what we are calling the uh, strategic trade and investment partnership uh, step with the United States uh, as we seek more clarity on, uh, on the direction to take on the bilateral agreement. But on AGOA itself, uh, we're going to have, uh, if I'm approved by this House, a, 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 a trade conference, a meeting of African ministers uh, later this year. Uh, and we are, Kenya is going to push for a common position for Africa that we have to have AGOA extended. Um, like all agreements, uh, they are also uh, subject to local politics. So by that time, I think in the next uh, uh, two, three weeks, the, the, we are going to have the midterm elections in the U.S., something which I'll be uh, watching very closely to see which direction the Congress takes. Uh, but irrespective of which, uh, whatever happens, uh, Africa and Kenya being on the front line is going to ask that uh, we take a common African position, uh, and that is that uh, Ago is not going anywhere. So uh, we will be coming back to this house to seek support, uh, even as we deal with the other legislatures uh, within the African continent, and to also express strongly the desire of Kenyan people and the African people that this act is very useful. It has grown jobs. It is, we are exporting uh, quite a lot under AGOA. We have not even exploited the list of, of products and services that can be exported within AGOA. So short answer is whether it, we are going for bilateral or not bilateral, whether we are going for the short term uh, strategic uh, initiative or not, uh, it is uh, my commitment and the commitment of uh, President William Ruto to push within the African context that we are able to link things and, and, and protect AGOA. He has also asked about that question about the EPZ and the Special Economic Zone. I, I, and I think another question has been asked about uh, the cost of land uh, for the EPZ. By the way, uh, we don't have shortage of land for manufacturing. Uh, what we have is a lot of EPZ allocated in most of the counties that has not been developed. And I have had this discussion with the president and we have agreed that we are going to fast track development of every idle space. Um, because of the political problems that uh, uh, our, our, our neighbors in Ethiopia uh, went through, uh, most of the Ethiopia was suspended from, from, from AGOA. And so therefore, all that there is a lot of demand for industrial space uh, within the EPZ. Uh, Sri Lanka had similar problems. Uh, which also lowered their export, especially to key markets like the United States. So to be able to take advantage of this uh, upsurge in demand, uh, especially from the U.S. And, and key markets like China and, and Europe, it is uh, our desire that we are going to develop every available space. At the same time, we have got two flagship, uh, uh, the, let me call them three. Uh, one is not very apparent. Uh, we have got the Dongo Kundu, uh, special economic zone in Kuala County, which uh, it is our, I am, I'm under a very firm instruction from the President that upon approval by this Parliament, we have to make Dongo Kudu move from paper to practice to take it off so that we can be able to, to create jobs. The Naivasha uh, uh, special economic zone as well, uh, we, we are going to see a lot of activities in that area to take it off the ground. We have got investors who have come in with proposals. Uh, I think the out the the past the British past government did flag off one of the uh, major investment projects in Naivasha from 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 Turkish investors and other economic zones, special economic zones, uh, Konza Development City, which doesn't appear like an economic zone, but actually is a special economic zone. That if I'm approved by this house, uh, I am going to be working very hard around the clock to bring in global technology companies within the within the uh, technopolis. Uh, two new uh, brand uh, special economic zones. Uh, one is a railway city development uh, authority right here in Nairobi, uh, adjacent to the railway, uh, which we hope to be our masterpiece for, for new urbanization. And uh, the Nairobi International Financial Center to bring together uh, the world uh, leading financial institutions. So these are the public uh, or the public uh, special economic zones. But also our people and also uh, uh, foreign investors have trooped in 
with the special, uh, private special economic zones. So far, we have got around 13 special economic zones uh, by private entities. Our, 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 our agenda is to have an open door policy. I know a lot of people have been going out there saying, I have applied for my SEZ license, I did not get approval, I have the land, I have the money. It is inconceivable, Mr. Chair, how you can frustrate somebody who have their own land and they have more money. I'm still trying to grapple with, with that very, very confusing situation. And, and, and so therefore, as a summary, we are going to ensure that we expand our IPZ and we are going to expand the special economic zones uh, to use our public uh, SECs like Togo Kundu, Real Estate Developments, Nairobi Financial Center and Naivasha Konza to be able to spar jobs and bring the much needed uh, foreign exchange in this country. And as uh, the Honorable Owen Bayer has said, even within those EPZ and special economic zones, we are going to work with the stakeholders to ensure that we also protect the rights of, 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 of workers. And actually do insist to the buyers of the products that come from EPZ and SEC that uh, we have to uh, commit to fair labor practices and, and other uh, ethical uh, business uh, behavior. Um, let me address the question by Honorable Mukami, which is very, very important. On the issue of, uh, and, and I think also uh, Honorable Murugala has asked us a, a related question. Is our manufacturing an urban affair? Is it an Arabi affair? Is it a big city affair? And the answer is no. Uh, even within our Kenya Kwanza Manifesto, we have planned aggregation centers in every county. So I want to assure members that in every county, we are going to have an aggregation center where we can be able to help our Dengu farmers and even our Mira farmers to aggregate their export, uh, introduce refrigeration. Uh, shortly after, if I am approved by this house, we are planning a pilot one which was already in the works in Ivasha. But uh, I am having this discussion with the Council of Governors to uh, identify uh, our competitive matrix for each county because every county has got their unique competitiveness in terms of products and we are going to ensure that not just for uh, value addition but uh, from these centers we are going to do value addition but also promote exports. It is my desire also to have a flagship mega uh, manufacturing project in every county according to the unique needs of every county. Kenya, I am really surprised, Mr. Chair, by the demand by foreign uh, manufacturers and also local manufacturers to set up uh, industries in Kenya. We just have not been doing it right. We have treated our investors as if we are doing them a favor. I am going to go on a knee and bend backwards to ask them to come in there and to show them a map of where Marimanti is. So uh, I want to assure members that this issue of aggregation and having industrial hubs in every county is going to be at the heart of, of, of my ministry and in the Kenya Kwanza government. Now, attendant to this also is uh, we have not been fair to our people. Expecting a, a, a Dengu farmer from Marimanti to know of a market and to know who is a buyer from that market and start trading with them is, is, is not realistic. So coupled with our aggregation centers that we are going to set up in the counties, we want to set up warehouses in key markets. And we have agreed with the president that we are doing two pilots of, uh, of uh, Kenya warehouse. Call them Kenya supermarket, if you may. It's like a supermarket, but uniquely uh, and uh, exclusive uh, for Kenyan products. One in DRC, in the eastern part of DRC, so that if you are a Dengu farmer from uh, uh, Marimanti, or if you are you know, you export another product, you can be able to take your product from your county aggregation hub to the Goma or Bubashi or Dubai, uh, where we are setting up the other Kenyan warehouse. And 